Brothers and sisters, to increase your iman. Read the miracle, recite the Quran. Recite it every day and do read it loud. The verses of Quran are all Muslim pride. This miracle was revealed over a long time span. Sent from Allah to an angel, then to a man. That man was Muhammad, the best of creation. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Praise be to Allah alone. We praise Him and we seek His help. Whomsoever Allah guides is the truly guided one, and whomsoever Allah leaves us say, none can show Him guidance. My dear brothers and sisters, I'd love to welcome you to another live edition of our program. Correct your citation, and also I'd like to welcome our studio guest, Sheikh Abdul Khaliq, as usual, and Brother Ahmed Jamal, and uh, Mahdi Fadl, and Muhammad Mahdi Fadl from Lagos. Uh, Ali, from, Nigeria. Ali, Ali Fadl, Fadl from no. Nigeria, Lagos. No. No. It would be a big mistake if I switch your name. And uh, <laughs> Mahdi from uh, Paris, from yeah. France. MashaAllah, good to have you here in the program today, all of you, my dear brothers. And you brothers and sisters, our viewers, without any further ado, and as usual, we're going to begin by a beautiful recitation. We'll listen to the uh, recitation of Sheikh Abdul Khaliq from ayah number 34 through ayah number um, 52. Sheikh Abdul Khaliq, please. <coughs> الأولى وما نحن بمنشرين فأتوا بآبائنا إن كنتم صادقين أهم خير أم قوم تبع والذين من قبلهم أهلكناهم إن هم كانوا مجرمين وما خلقنا السماوات والأرض وما بينهما لاعبين ما خلقناهما إلا بالحق ولكن أكثرهم لا يعلمون إن فَاصْلِمِي قَاتُهُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ يَوْمَ لَا يُغْنِي مَوْلًى عَن مَوْلًى شَيْئًا وَلَا هُمْ يُنصَرُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ رَحِمَ اللَّهُ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الرَّحِيمُ إِنَّ شجرة الزقوم طعام الأثيم كالمهد يغلي في البطون كغلي الحميم خذوه فاعتلوه إلى سواء الجحيم ثم صبوا فوق رأسه عذاب الحميم ذق إنك أنت العزيز الكريم إن هذا ما كنتم به تمترون إن المتقين في مقام أمين في جنة very beautiful mashallah may Allah bless you Sheikh Abdel Khaliq um, some very interesting vocabulary in the beginning uh, of the explanation of this ayat would like to be acquainted of uh, the first word is the word munshareen from nashr which means resurrection so munshareen means to be resurrected or raised again while the word la'ibin means 
in play or for near play. <coughs> um, and the following word is the word al athim al athim in ayah number 44 ta'am al athim which means the wicked the constantly vicious the very evil so athim is an extensive form of evil is very deep in evil while the word al muhl in ayah number 45 refers to the molten brass or silver or um, the oil but it is not clear it's like dusty oil the word hamim means an extremely hot water you can say it's even boiling water is a command verb which means drag him drag him again it's his will tam tarun from the word uh, to be in doubt of you doubt it you doubt it, the matter of resurrection and so on so these vocabulary we have seven words will help us comprehend the meaning of these ayat when Allah the Almighty spoke about the story of Prophet Moses with the Pharaoh and the conclusion of the story the victory of Moses and the believers along with him and the defeat of the Pharaoh and his drowning and his host he followed that by addressing the Meccan pagans take heed because the Pharaoh and his hosts were much more powerful than you and Musa السلام, and his followers were very weak and oppressed yet Allah the Almighty made them victorious and he utterly destroyed the Pharaoh and his host so take heed وَلَقَدْ نَجَّيْنَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ مِنَ الْعَذَابِ الْمُهِينَ then afterward Allah the Almighty referred to Quraysh the Meccan pagans who rejected faith and they refused to believe in Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and furthermore they opposed him they challenged him they persecuted him and his followers he summarized their opposition and why indeed such people they say what do they say they say in here illa mawtatuna al-ula wa ma nahnu bimunshareen ayah number 35 this is what they say uh, that is the only death that we're going to experience once we die here there is nothing but our first death and we shall not be resurrected so that was the major issue behind refusing the message of Islam why and that is the main concern of atheists agnostic people and those who deny the presence of God or Creator it is simply because they want to dismiss the possibility of reckoning why why do you want to dismiss the possibility of reckoning because they want to be free they want to do whatever they want to do without any accountability they don't want anyone to tell them what to do and this is right and this is wrong and this is lawful and this is unlawful they want to simply do whatever they want to do as long as it is you know fulfilling their desire that is perfectly okay even if it is very extreme in evil it doesn't matter so that's why they were very stubborn and they said that is the only death that we're going to experience and once we die there is no way that we shall come back to life whether for reckoning or for any other reason there is no resurrection that was mentioned in several ayat in the Quran for innocence in Surah Al-Safat chapter number 37 You've got the two following verses, 58 and 59. Allah the Almighty said about them, they said, أَفَمَا نَحْنُ بِمَيِّتِينَ إِلَّا مَوْتَتُنَا الْأُولَى وَمَا نَحْنُ بِمُعَذَّبِينَ They dismissed the possibility of resurrection. And they said, if we die, that's it. It will be only one death, مَوْتَتُنَا الْأُولَى. And accordingly, there is no way that to be brought up for reckoning. And accordingly, there is no adab. There is no torment. There is no punishment because there is no reckoning. In Surah Al-Mu'minun also, chapter number 23, we're going to memorize the number of this chapter because it has many, many references. In ayah number 37, Allah the Almighty quoted, there is saying, In here illa hayatuna dunya namutu wa nahya. 
وَمَا نَحْنُ بِمَبْعُوثِينَ That is the only life that we're going to live. And once we die, there will not be any ba'ath, which means resurrection. In Surah Al-Jathiyah, 45, Ayah number 24, وَقَالُوا مَا هِيَ إِلَّا حَيَاتُنَا الدُّنْيَا نَمُوتُ وَنَحْيَا وَمَا يُهْلِكُنَا إِلَّا الدَّهْرِ They said that is the only life that we're going to live. And once we die, there will not be any life. And what destroys us, not God. What takes our souls, not God. Rather, it is simply time. Once we expire, there is no way that we will come back to life. Because of that, when we scrutinize the Sunnah and we study the Ahadith, we find plenty of Ahadith in which Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, link between believing in the oneness of Allah and in the last day and doing good deeds. Believing in the oneness of Allah and the last day and abstaining from doing bad deeds. Why? Because if you truly believe in Allah, if you fear Allah, and you truly believe there will be gathering, resurrection, reckoning, and accountability, that will make you refrain yourself from committing sins. مَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ فَلْيُكْرِمْ ضَيْفَةِ فَلْيُكْرِمْ جَارَةِ فَلْيَقُلْ خَيْرًا أَوْ لِيَصْمُدْ we as human beings have the desire of talking. Sometimes we talk vain talk, we indulge into slandering, backbiting, or just chatting. Whether on social media or one-on-one -on -one or in a gathering, talking about somebody else in their absence. So only for those who believe that whatever you say is recorded, is either recorded for you or against you, they have the strength to refrain themselves from talking vain talk from indulging not only in vain talk also from listening to something which is vain why because there is oh I believe ما يلفظ من قول إلا لديه رقيب عتيد anything you utter it will be recorded so the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم brings our attention that what makes you refrain yourself from committing sins is your firm belief that there will be reckoning a reckoning will happen only as a result of resurrection. But the atheists, the agnostics, and the Meccan pagans before, they dismissed the possibility of resurrection for this reason. So let's enjoy our life. Hayhata hayhata lima tu'adun. In hiya illa hayatuna dunya namutu wa nahya wa ma nahnu bimab'uthin. This is what they say. That is the only life we're going to live. There is no way that we can come back to life after we die. And then their Satan made it seem fair to them to bring the following argument. You know the Quran says, وَكَانَ الْإِنسَانُ أَكْثَرَ شَيْءٍ جَذَلَ Insan is very argumentative. Very argumentative. Whether he truly believes that he's right or he truly believes that he's wrong, but he likes to argue. So what is the, argu what is the argument that they presented to Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and how the Quran refuted it? They said, if you truly believe, and if you truly promise with us, there will be life after death, there will be accountability, then fa'tu bi'aba'ina in kuntum sadiqeen. Hey, show us a proof, a physical proof. Why don't you bring back our forefathers if you speak the truth? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought their argument. And they said Hashim used to be uh, Abu Qusay ibn Kilab, one of the uh, four fathers, the great grandfathers of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi used to be a good man. Can you ask your God to bring him back to life? How Allah the Almighty refuted this, uh, you know, claim? He said, أَهُمْ خَيْرٌ أَمْ قَوْمُ تُبَّعْ وَالَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ أَهْلَكْنَاهُمْ إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا مُجْرِمِينَ First of all, we have studied before in Surah Al-Mu'minun that whenever the wicked, the criminals, and the non-believers approach death, they say, قَالَ رَبِّ ارْجِعُونَ لَعَلِّي أَعْمَلُوا صَالِحًا فِي مَا تَرَكْتْ And the Quran tells us that Allah replies back to them by saying, كَلَّا When they approach death or when death approaches them, they say, just give me a spite, send me back to life, I promise I will do better. And this is also what the Pharaoh said while he was being drowned. So Allah the Almighty said, no, this is not going to happen. You're going to remain in this condition of the barzakh barrier between this life that we live and the hereafter until the day of 
resurrection which will be followed by gathering and accountability so he brings to their attention that you guys pass by you go back and forth by nations who have been destroyed because they disobeyed their prospective prophets such as he made mention of a nation of the Arab who are the descendants of Qahtan Quraysh were the descendants of Adnan they are Arab as well and Qahtan is an Arab as well and Qahtan used to be in the southern part of the peninsula particularly the kingdom of Saba or Himyar who is Tubba and what is Tubba Tuba used to be a very nice man, very generous man, and he was a great warrior. He led his people and his kingdom in many victorious battles in the east and the west, so he was very known of being victorious and a great hero. He, 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 even after the event of the attempt of Abraha al-Habashi to destroy the Kaaba, when he heard of what happened, he came from Yemen and he covered the Kaaba with a cloth to honor the Kaaba. And he was about to invade Yathrib, but when he heard about a prophecy that uh, a messenger who shall come by the end of time will emerge and will reside in Yathrib, so he abstained from invading Yathrib for that reason. So he was a good man. In the hadith, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, لا تسبوا تبعا فإنه قد أسلم كان قد أسلم Don't you curse Tubba. He was a great victorious leader. So people were very angry with him and they, because he invaded their countries and their nations. So they used to curse him and say, don't you curse him. He had accepted Islam. To honor his name, people in Yemen have given the title of every ruler who would rule over Himyar or Saba, their kingdom. They give him the title Tubba, like the Persian emperor. Whether it is this person or that person, they give him the title of Kesra, the Roman emperor. They give him the title of Qaisar. The Egyptian uh, king, al muqawqis The Abyssinian king, al najashi These are not names. These are the titles of people who rule over these uh, countries or nations. So Tubba was a nation. And he was ruled by this man. Okay. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings to their attention how powerful were Qahtan. They were much more powerful than the people of Adnan. They at least had a big civilization in Himyar in Saba, unlike the descendants of Adnan in Mecca. Mm. There were some bunch of Bedouins, you know. So if you're rejecting the truth, on what basis, what kind of power do you possess? Look at uh, Tubba and those who were before them, like whom? Ad wa Thamud, the people of prophethood and the people of prophet Salih. You pass by their homes, by the remnants of their homes, right? by their monuments what happened to them everybody knows their stories because Allah sent to them a prophet and they disbelieved in him so they ended up being destroyed is this or isn't that an enough proof then وَمَا خَلَقَنَا السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا لَاعِبِينَ آية number 38 Allah the Almighty reiterate the purpose of creation by negating what they say they say that in here, illa hayatuna dunya. That is the only love that we're gonna live. So let's enjoy it and have fun. He said, "No, we have not created the heavens and the earth for mere play." Laibin from laib. Huh? وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا وَلَهُ. Yes, that is true. The, the, the life of this world is all about, you know, play and having fun. But by the end, there will be accountability. Because of that, Allah the Almighty dismisses their false argument that let's have fun in this life because there is nothing after we die. No. وَمَا خَلَقْنَا السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا And what is in between? In vain. Or for mere play. مَا خَلَقْنَاهُمَا إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ We've not created them both, the heavens and the earth, and accordingly what is in between, but with the truth. As you know that our earth planet which is like a drop in an ocean compared to the sun, and the sun is like a drop in an ocean compared to many other galaxies and planets, literally like a drop in an ocean, right? All of that is nothing compared to uh, the heavens, and the heavens and the earth and what is in between is nothing compared to the Kursi, and the Kursi is like a ring thrown in a flame compared to Al-Arsh. 
So in between the heavens and the earth, there are many other creations. For those who ask whether there are aliens or not, of course. <laughs> there are وَيَخْلُقُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ He creates many other creatures that you have no clue about. So are there aliens? Of course there are. Or do you think that Allah has not created but us? Has not created but the seven continents? And that's it? No. He has not created the heavens and the earth and what is in between for mere play. So what did he create them for? مَا خَلَقَنَاهُمَّ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ They've not created them but with the truth. What is the truth here? The truth, my dear brothers and sisters, has been explained in many other ayahs. Take for instance, in Surah Al-Mulk, الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا That is the purpose of creating life and death in order to test you which one of you is best indeed. And the recompense will be accordingly. In Surah Al-Mu'minun, أَفَحَسِبْتُمْ أَنَّمَا خَلَقَنَاكُمْ عَبَثًا وَأَنَّكُمْ إِلَيْنَا لَا تُرْجَعُونَ Do you think that I've created you for mere play? And you will not come back to us? فَتَعَالَ اللَّهُ الْمَلِكُ الْحَقِّ Allah, the King, the Owner, the Ultimate Truth is above what you're ascribing to Him of creating that for mere play. لا إله إلا هو رب العرش الكريم There is no other God besides Him. He is the Lord of the noble throne. Okay? So ما خلقناهما إلا بالحق يت ولكن أكثرهم لا يعلمون But most of them know not. You know, Ahmed, every time in the Quran you find the word أكثر then you predict the following is something to be dispraised. أكثرهم لا يؤمنون لا يشكرون لا يعلمون Most of people are ignorant, non-believers, ungrateful, or rebellious. So you do not actually celebrate being among the vast majority. Normally, the believers are the minority. And that's why the rulers of fire outnumber the rulers of heaven. And Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, predicted and prophesied that by the end of time, Islam, he said, بدأ الإسلام غريبا وسيعود غريبا كما بدأ. The mission of Islam in the beginning sounded as like a strange idea and were very few followers in Mecca. Similarly, towards the end of time, and after Islam will prevail over all other religions, it will decline where the followers will become minority. The followers will become minority. Then Allah the Almighty said, so if life will be followed by death and death will be followed by resurrection, when this is going to happen and how this is going to happen and for what reason? He used one of the names of the many names of the Day of Judgment, which explains the purpose of resurrection. We know that in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala named the Yawm Al-Qiyamah or the Day of Judgment with many names. If you can remind me of some of those names, Al-Haqqa, Al-Sakha, Al-Qari'a, Al-Waqi'a, Al-Zalzala, Yawm Al-Hashr, Yawm Al-Qiyamah, Yawm Al-Din, Yawm Al-Fasl, Yawm Al-Fasl. In Surah Al-Naba, إِنَّ يَوْمَ الْفَصْلِ كَانَ مِيْقَاتًا يَوْمَ نُفَخُ فِي الصُّورِ فَتَأْتُونَ أَفْوَاجًا Indeed, يوم الفصل يوم الفصل is the day of Fصل means like, you know, if two people are attached to each other or perhaps fighting and you separate this one from that one or very close to each other and you separate this one from that one that's called separation, Fصل Fasl where on that day, the day of judgment, people will be separated, even loved ones, because people will be categorized according to not their blood relationship, not based on the family lineage or the complexion or where are you from. No. Like Mahdi is from Paris. You're from Nigeria. It doesn't matter where you're from. 
the categorization will be based on something totally different, which is muttaqeen fujjar. Inna lil muttaqeena mafaza. Okay? The righteous will be successful, will enter paradise. The criminals will be ruined and will enter hellfire. May Allah protect us again is that. So in the yawm al-fasli miqatuhum ajma'in, the day of judgment and sorting people out is the time appointed for all of them. In Surah Al-Safat, chapter number 37, verse number 21, Allah the Almighty says, هَذَا يَوْمُ الْفَصْلِ الَّذِي كُنْتُمْ بِهِ تُكَذِّبُونَ That's another reference. Allah the Almighty referred to the day of judgment as يَوْمُ الْفَصْلِ which you guys used to deny. So on the day of judgment, he will confront them with their denial. You deny that. Now you're here. Surah Al-Mursalat. وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا يَوْمُ الْفَصْلِ وَيْلٌ يَوْمَئِذٍ لِلْمُكَذِّبِينَ And what will make you know about the day of sorting out and separation, separating people from each other? Wow, on the day to the deniers and beliers. Then also in 38 Surah Al-Mursalat, هَذَا يَوْمُ الْفَصْلِ جَمَعْنَاكُمْ وَالْأَوَّلِينَ Telling us that on the day of Al-Fasl, all people will be gathered. That's called Hashr. What? For? For Fasl. For judgment. يَوْمَ لَا يُغْنِي مَوْلًا عَمْ مَوْلًا شَيْئًا وَلَا هُمْ يُنصَرُونَ Al-Mawla means a near relative, a supporter. Uh, and an intimate friend, a loved one. But on the day, the Mawla cannot avail his near relative or his loved one in art. And no help can be received by no one. And we have in many ayat, subhanAllah, in Surah Al-Mumtahana, for instance, in ayah number uh, three, Surah Al-Mumtahana, uh, chapter number 60, Allah the Almighty says, لَن تَنْفَعَكُمْ أَمْوَالُكُمْ وَلَا أَوْلَادُكُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ يَفْصِلُ بَيْنَكُمْ Neither your wealth nor your children will avail you an art. Subhanallah. يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ يَفْصِلُ بَيْنَكُمْ On the day of judgment, يَفْصِلُ بَيْنَكُمْ He will judge between you and decide who is successful and who will be ruined. Surah Al-Ma'arij, Allah the Almighty says, وَلَا يَسْأَلُ حَمِيمٌ حَمِيمًا Even the very close friends and the loved ones, no one would even bother to ask from another any help because they know that no one will help. فَإِذَا نُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ فَلَا أَنْسَابَ بَيْنَهُمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ وَلَا يَتَسَأَلُونَ Once the trumpet will be blown and all the family ties and the blood relationship and the intimate, all of that will be gone. Rather, every person will utter only one, one word, which is myself, myself. Even the prophets will keep saying nafsi, nafsi. Not a single person, but will utter myself, myself. I want to spare myself. Oh, Allah, have mercy on us. So that will be the situation where, you know, even Aisha radiallahu anha, when she asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa you know, will there be any time where you will deny everyone and you will not recognize him? And he said, yes, 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 of course. At the time of judgment and on as-sarat, while people are crossing the bridge, everybody will be saying, Rabbi sallim, sallim, myself, myself. Oh, Allah, keep me safe, myself, myself. So if the Prophet's, will be concerned only about themselves. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِلَّا مَنْ رَحِمَ اللَّهِ Except for those whom Allah will have mercy upon, may Allah make us among them. He is indeed the Almighty, the most merciful. My dear brothers and sisters, I want to end this segment by reminding myself and you brothers and sisters with the ayah of Surah Al-Baqarah. وَاتَّقُوا يَوْمًا لَا تَجِزِي نَفْسٌ عَنْ نَفْسٍ شَيْئًا Fear a day on which not a single soul will bear the sin or accept the responsibility of another person. No matter how close is this person to you. Rather, يَوْمَ يَفَرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَنِيهِ 
a son will denounce his uh, father and a father will denounce his son and then the spouses will denounce and deny each other and so on. Why? Everyone on that day will be only concerned about his or her safety. May Allah give us salvation on the day of judgment and keep us safe both in this life and in the hereafter. We're going to take a short break and we'll be back inshallah in a few minutes. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Recite it every day and do read it loud. Every day and do read it loud. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Um, as you all know that in this segment we open the phone line for those who would like to uh, give us a call to recite the ayat from ayah number 34 through ayah number 52 insha'Allah. Uh, I know that many of you have not gotten the new frequency yet so we'll post the phone numbers and I hope insha'Allah you get the frequency as soon as possible. Area code 002 then 0238552312 and the other number is area code 002 then um, um, trying to remember the number 0100546 uh, We have a caller, Sister Muna. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I thank you, sister. Again, we're reciting this. Yes, we're reciting this week from ayah number 34. So you can recite from 34 uh, to 39, insha'Allah. From 34 to 39? Correct. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن هي إلا موتتنا الأولى وما نحن بمنشرين. I want you to go back one آية sister Mona please. إن هؤلاء okay. لا يقولون. إن هؤلاء لا يقولون. Yes, that's thirty four. إن هؤلاء لا يقولون إن هي إلا موتتنا الأولى وما نحن بمنشرين فأتوا بآبائنا إن كنتم صادقين أهم خير أم قوم تبع والذين من قبلهم أهلكناهم إنهم كانوا مجرمين وما خلقنا السماوات والأرض وما بينهما لاعبين والأرض ما وما ما خلقناهما إلا بالحق ولا Again, Sister Muna, this ayah 38. وَمَا خَلَقَنَا السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ مَا خَلَقْنَاهُمَا إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَهُمْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Hasbuk, Barakallahu feek. Okay, couple things. Why did I ask you to go back one ayah? Not just because the ayah number follows the ayah, so it is by the end of the ayah. So when I say 34, then inna ha'ula ila yaqulun. But also there is a very interesting science which is known as al-waqfu wa libtida. Where to start at and where to begin from. You can just jump in and read from any part of the Quran. Neither can you stop at any ayah of your choice because it may provide an incomplete meaning. But this is a typical example. When you say, when you begin your citation, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in here illa mawtatun al It sounds like you're the one who's saying so. Okay, because you are actually presenting the first person. In here illa mawtatun al-Ula wa ma nahnu bimunshareen, which is which is a big fault. It's definitely not our statement. So you gotta ascribe it to the sayers, the subject, which is the Meccan pagans and those who are similar to them. So you gotta say, 
إن هؤلاء لا يقولون they say not you okay we normally say also a typical example in Surah Al-Ma'oon when you say فَوَيْلٌ uh, you can't just stop and say that فَوَيْلٌ للمصلين and you stop because the meaning is incomplete mm. right Barakallah fikum that's why we have those signs where لا you shouldn't stop here mm. and uh, meme you must stop here mm. right Barakallah fikum uh, Muhammad from Malaysia Assalamu alaikum Muhammad Wa alaikum assalam Go ahead and recite from A number 40 please 40 to uh, 52 Inna yawma al-fasli miqatuhum ajma'in Inna yawma al-fasli miqatuhum ajma'in Yawma la yubni mawlan an mawlan shay'an Wa la hum yunsarun إلا من رحم الله إنه هو العزيز الرحيم إن شجرة الزقوم رعاه الأثيم كالمهل يغلي في البطون كغلي الحميم خذوه فاعتلوه إلى سواء الجحيم ثم صبوا فوق رأسه من عذاب الحميم ذق إنك أنت العزيز الكريم إن هذا ما كنتم به تمتعون إن المتقين في مقام أمين في جنات وعمر MashaAllah Muhammad, MashaAllah. But I got a surprise for you. MashaAllah, uh, we have a guest today, uh, Ahmed Jamal. And MashaAllah, I was so much impressed with his recitation. So I'm going to kindly request him to recite from ayah number 34, please. <laughs> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن هؤلاء لا يقولون إن هي إلا موتتنا الأولى وما نحن بمنشرين فأتوا والذين من قبلهم أهلكناهم إنهم كانوا مجرمين وما خلقنا السماوات والأرض وما بينهما لاعبين ما خلقناهما يوم لا يغني مولا عن مولا شيئا ولا هم ينصرون إلا من رحم الله إنه هو العزيز الرحيم حسبك يا محمد very beautiful, mashallah. Jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum, sister Farida from Kuwait. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, sister? Alhamdulillah. Okay, go ahead and recite from 
A number 40. In yawm al-fasli miqatuhum ajma'in. Top of the page, please. In? Go ahead and recite. Okay. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. In yawm al-fasli miqatuhum ajma'in. يوم لا يغني مولا عن مولا شيئا ولا هم ولا هم ينصرون إلا من رحم الله إنه هو العزيز الرحيم إن شجرة الزقوم طعام الأثيم كالمخل يغلي في البطون فغلع الحميم خذوه فاعتلوه إلى سباء الجحيم ثم صبوا فوق رأسه من عذاب الحميم ذق إنك أنت العزيز الكريم إن هذا ما كنتم به تنترون إن المتقين في مقام أمين في جنات وعيون حسبك سيستا فايدة ما شاء الله very nice بارك الله فيك uh, just the beginning مولا عن مولا Okay, because there is izhar, the tanween is followed by the letter ayn, an. So, mawlan an mawla. Yawma la yughni mawlan an mawla. Barakallahu feek. Ali Fadl from Lagos, Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum. Yes, wa alaikum assalam. So, I don't start from anal 34, please. Inna ha ula ila quula. 34. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن هؤلاء لا يقولون إن هي إلا موتتنا الأولى وما نحن بمنشرين فأتوا بآباء صادقين أهم خير أم قوم تبع والذين من قبلهم أهلكناهم إنهم كانوا مجرمين وما قلقنا السماوات والأرض وما بينهما لاعبين ما خلقناهما إلا بالحق ولكن أكثرا ولكن أكثرهم لا يعلمون حسبك علي there is a very beautiful uh, characteristic which is known as qalqala. Mm. It makes a big difference. It's like it, like it revives a word. Mm. Like when you say, وَمَا خَلَقْنَا السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ I mm. feel like the word is dead. Then when you add the qalqala to it, it revives it. وَمَا خَلَقَ وَمَا خَلَقَنَا السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا لَاعِبِينَ The following ayah likewise. مَا خَلَقَنَا مَا خَلَقَنَاهُمَا إِلَّا بِالْحَقَّ Also the letter قَفِ in the word بِالْحَقَّ When I stop at it, I convert the zir into a sukun. The kasra into a sukun. So the qalqala is you as well. I want to hear it back from you. مَا خَلَقَنَاهُمَا إِلَّا بِالْحَقَّ ما خلقناهما إلا بالحق ولكن أكثرهم لا يعلمون. Thank you. Sheikh Abd Al Khaliq is very impressed with you, and when he says "ما شاء الله" that means you passed. Okay. Last but not the least, Mahdi from Paris, from France. Go ahead and recite "إن يوم الفصل كان نقاطه" to the end. 
Almighty make us all among them. Amen. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, by that we come to the end of today's edition of your program. Correct your citation. We ask Allah to accept from all of us. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters, to increase your iman, read the miracle, recite the Quran. Recite it every day and do read it loud The verses of Quran are all Muslim pride This miracle was revealed over a long time span Sent from Allah to an angel then to a man That man was Muhammad, the best of creation and We were chosen to be part of his nation He gave us a message And that was Islam So read this miracle Recite the Quran 